what's up guys welcome to another video today we will be doing a medium long full set French and we're going for the color pink so I already prepped my nail using my fine sanding band and I'm just going in right now and I'm measuring my tips whenever you're measuring your tips you want to make sure they fit side wall to side wall that way they have their full strength if you have a tip that's too small and it's and another one that might be a bit bigger go with the bigger one because you can always come in with your hand file and shave the sides down but just make sure your tips fit side wall to side wall that way your clients nails don't break easily you need the full strength from the nails and then I'm just gonna come in with my KDS glue this is the glue I've been using it's a very good glue and it's been working so sometimes if you have your tips if you have your glue put sit aside for a long time it will get hardened at the tip so sometimes you have to go in with your scissors or your nail clipper and you have to cut that off so like I said before I'm coming in with my square tips guys these square tips are on my website and whenever you're gluing the nail on the client's finger you want to make sure that you hold the client's nail hand straight don't have them turning their hands to the side or holding their hand crooked make sure at all times you have full control of the client's hand whether you need to tell them to relax or fix their hands but just make sure whatever you're doing you have full control these nail tips they fit very well and they stick very fast so i highly recommend these square tips and i will leave the link in my description box for the tips i'm coming in with my scissors i usually come in with my scissors some people use tip cutters some people use nail clippers but I find it much easier when I use my scissors. And then I'm just gonna come in and cut the, the tips to the client's desired length. And then I'm gonna come back and measure the tips, um, making sure the length is the same. And whenever you're measuring the tips, you wanna make sure that you align them cuticle to the cuticle. So you, you put each cuticle together against each other that's how you make sure they're on the same length and then we're just gonna come in with the scissors and i'm just gonna take off any excess that i see that's out of line that way i don't have as much shaping to do whenever i'm shaping the nail so these tips were already squared but as you know sometimes you have to taper them a little bit more so that's what i'm using the scissors to do to help me to get any wide edges off and just give me a jump to my shaping and then i'm just gonna come in with my 100 100 grit hand file and i'm gonna shape the nails whenever you're shaping the nail guys you have to make sure you hold the client's hand very straight and you want to make sure you if you're doing a square shape you want to make sure you hold the file completely straight you're going to get the sides and you're going to get the free edge of the tips so how you know when the nail is perfectly shaped and squared off the nail tip have to line up with the groove of the nail so look at that you want to make sure that you line up the, the the tip to the groove of the client's nail and that's how you know when you have a perfectly shaped tip you don't want to taper the edges the free edge you don't want to taper that in too much and you don't want to you don't want to have the side bulky you want to have a perfect straight line from the groove to the tip of the nail so make sure you hold your hand file completely straight and each time you file you keep alternating and look at what you're doing making sure you're not making the nail crooked so that's one thing you have to shape and look then you go to the next side then you shape again and you look most times the problem of the tip is at the edge of the tip that tends to be a bit wider so you have to kind of focus on the edge of the tip making sure everything out there is not kind of flared off and it's lined up with the groove of the nail 
I hope you guys understood what I'm what I just said, but I'm just trying to say hold your hand file straight and make sure the tip aligns to the groove of the nail. And whenever you're filing, you should apply pressure that way you're not just playing with the nail you're actually shaping the nail and like i said before i'm using a 100 100 grit hand file and whenever i'm done shaping i usually come back with my hand file and i just blend the tip where the tip and the natural nail meets because that gives me a smoother application so i usually just do that just to be on the safe side then I'm going to come in and I'm going to dust my nails off. That way our nail is free of any dust, any debris, and we have a clean surface to work on. Now I'm going to come in with my Young Nails Protein Bond and I'm going to put two coats of Protein Bond. You don't want to put too much Protein Bond because if you put too much Protein Bonds, you could flood the cuticle and then the, the acrylic will not adhere to the nail properly. So you don't want to put too little, but too little, but at the same time, you don't want to flood the cuticle. You put two coats and you just make sure it's not too much and it's not too little. And like I said before, I'm using the Young Nails Protein Bond. And then whenever I'm done with this step, I usually just go and clean up whatever excess that I've that I have on my table I clean as I go along and look how nice and clean that surface looks so guys this is my monomer this is the 8 ounce monomer I love this bottle so much it's so it's easy to use spill you won't have any spillage so easily because of how it's designed to spray out so that's perfect and today we're going to be using bubble pink and this also is one of my acrylics and it's gonna be in the link in the description box below so whenever we're doing nails guys we're gonna always stick to the same routine so if you're a person you like to do three ball method stick to your three ball method if you like to do two balls stick to that four balls stick to that but you have to pick a method and stick to it for the most part when I'm doing nails I do two ball so I always shoot for two ball if it's like a medium length nails, medium long like this or shorter, it's two ball. If it's longer than this, I go for three to four. So it all depends. And then, like I said before, you want to keep, keep, um, keep your same routine and that way you can improve on your speed also. So just bear that in mind, like just pick pick something that you like and stick to it don't be all over the place and also i'm using a number 12 brush this brush is also on my website it's currently sold out and i'm waiting to restock but whenever i restock i'm gonna let you guys know but for right now it's sold out whenever we're applying guys you want to make sure you always clean up your sidewall that way you keep the shape of the nail and whenever you apply your acrylic guys if you see anything that you need to fix you should always come back in with a small bead and fix it okay so let's get into the application you want to make sure the brush is saturated then you're going to swipe one side of the brush then the side that you did not swipe you're going to put that in the in the acrylic you're going to hold tap and press then you're going to pick up the bead and you're going to place that bead right where the tip and the natural nail meet whenever you're applying the acrylic you want to make sure the client's finger is tilted down that way gravity naturally the acrylic is going to flow to the tip of the nail if you're leaning the nail to the side the acrylic will most likely flow off to the side so you want to make sure you're holding the the acrylic you're holding the client's finger downwards and make sure if they're moving you fix their nail to your liking so the cuticle bead we apply just above the cuticle and then we're gonna tuck it back in the cuticle and then we're just gonna give the acrylic light strokes this step guys do not require like 
too much like don't be too rough on it just be gentle and give the acrylic light strokes and don't forget to clean up your side walls and clean up your free edge so again we saturate the brush and then we're gonna go in our acrylic we're gonna bounce one time and then press pick up the bead place the bead hold the bead for like two seconds then you release it then you're gonna guide the acrylic hold the client's finger downward and then whenever you're working guys don't just stick to one side you have to alternate look up you have to look at each side of the nail see what's happening all over the nail what's happening and don't just do something just because you think you should do it whenever you're working work with intention be intentional about your moves if the acrylic is flowing right and all you need to do is guide it don't go in it and like play and tapping it for no reason let the acrylic flow and then wherever you see that you need to guide or you need to clean up you could just go ahead and do that but for the most part the acrylic is self-leveling and it's doing its own thing all you need to do is guide the acrylic and make sure it's flowing in the right direction whenever you apply guys also remember to clean up your side walls because you don't want to have any lifting so you want to make sure every time you come in and you clean your side walls up that's going to prevent any lifting and also when you come back to drill you're not going to have that much work to do to clean up all that acrylic off the nail and like i said before this process is very gentle so don't overthink it just relax and just work with intention and if you're going to the cuticle don't pick up a huge bead you you look at the nail you analyze the nail if you're doing a short nail you can just be like okay this nail is short i have this much space at the cuticle that means i need a small bead don't just pick up any bead that's what i'm trying to say and if you're going to tr if you're trying to go from the tip to the free edge to the where the tip and the natural nail meets to the free edge then you know you might need a bigger bead so just analyze the nail and work with intention and also for the apex my apex so this is how i look at it some people i see when they apply the acrylic the back of the nail is low and then the tip of the nail is high it's like a hill you do not want that you want your nail to have a slope so it starts from the cuticle then it rises at the apex and then it flows into the free edge so you're supposed to have like the cuticle then you're gonna have the rays the rays is the is the apex and then you're gonna have like a slight slope going towards the free edge so that's how you should look at your nail structure. When you look at your nail from the side, you should see where you started at the cuticle. You should see where the apex rises and you should see where the nail slope. Look at it from that angle that I just turned the nail. You want to make sure you can see the cuticle, the raise, and then the slope to the free edge of the nail y'all i know this is so random but this pink is so so pretty make sure you guys check out my acrylics this is called bubble pink oh i just love this pink like if you're doing an ombre or any type of french bubble pink is perfect perfect
now we're gonna be drilling the nail and I use my Melody the drill that I'm using is from Melody Susie it's the black one I know they have a few I bought it off of Amazon I know they have a few but I got mine from Amazon and it's the black color one like you can see so whenever I'm drilling I'm usually at 20 to 22 rpm for this part and rpm is ro rotation per minute that's how fast the drill bit is actually going so whenever i'm drilling i'm doing this part of it so if i'm prepping i prep at four to five thousand rpms whenever i'm debulking or doing any type of soak off i'm usually between 22 and 19 thereabout so that's how that's the speed i'm usually at so whenever you're drilling guys you want to make sure you have your pinky finger resting on either the client's hand but just find a safe spot find somewhere you can rest your pinky finger because this is gonna give you stability. So you wanna always make sure you have your pinky finger resting somewhere. Also, whenever you're drilling, wherever you're drilling, that's where the tip of the drill bit is supposed to be. Look at how I am moving the drill in the direction that I am going. So if you're doing the, if you're doing the cuticle area, the tip of the bit is supposed to be in the cuticle area. If you're doing the sides, the tip of the bit is supposed to be in the side like that. That is the only way you can angle the bit to actually seal the nail. So if you really want to seal the nail, you have to put the tip of the bit in that area, in the side wall or in the cuticle, the tip of the bit needs to be there and then i usually use my drill bit as well to give me that sharpness of the free edge of my nail that way you have that nice sharp look so also whenever you're drilling you want to make sure that you keep your drill moving don't have the drill in one spot for too long because that can cause friction and then the your client's nail will start burning so you want to make sure you're always moving your drill bit and you're, you want to make sure also when you're drilling, you drill with intention as well. Like I spoke about with the acrylic application, whatever you're doing is supposed to be intentional. So you want to be drilling and looking. Don't just be removing unnecessary product. Drill and look and keep the drill moving. Don't keep the drill in one spot because then you can cause friction and that really hurts. That burning feeling is nothing to play with. If your free edge is a little bit thick, you can go in with your drill as well and you can remove any thickness and bring it to how you like it. But I don't like my free edge to be too thick and I don't like it to be paper thin either. I like my free edge to be nice, like just perfect in my eyes. And also with the drill guys, you want to make sure that you, you're using the correct drill bit this drill bit that i'm using to debulk is a medium drill bit and this drill bit is from pana i got this off of amazon as well so this is the pana medium drill bit i have the pana medium drill bit the medium i use to whenever i'm finished applying and i'm um, debulking which is this one and then the course i use for soak offs and then the fine one, I hardly use it. I'm mostly using the medium and the coarse drill bit from Pana. And that's on Amazon. And also, guys, one more thing with drilling. Whenever you're drilling around the nail, the cuticle area or the sidewall, be mindful of the client's natural nail. Because sometimes you can think you're drilling the acrylic and you're actually drilling the client's natural nail like around the perimeters of the nail around the cuticle all that area you have to remember that some part of it sometimes is the client's natural nail so you want to make sure whenever you're drilling you're just looking and look where you're placing the bit look what the bit is touching <music> I 
already buffed the nail and did all that stuff off camera because my next client was coming and I was late so for the most part I'm like I can't even record all that extra stuff like buffing the nail and stuff like that but basically when I was done drilling I just buffed and I sent her to wash her hands and then we just got on with the design so I'm gonna be doing a white French right here so this brush also guys I got it off of Amazon I'm gonna leave the link in the description box as well so whenever i'm doing a french i don't go the long way to do all that v the u the x's no i don't i practice how to swirl my hand or i don't know how you call it but i practice my loop come from one side loop it in and then come from the other side so look at how i do it i do like that one and then two and then i figure my centerpiece and then i meet in the middle I don't do the I don't practice the extra step I don't practice that I do it like this I practiced it like this and I'm happy I did because it's gonna save me so much time in the end because now I know how to do it really good so I'm happy I wasn't trying to do all the extra stuff I just try to get my loop right and it's not so hard to get the loop right guys all you got to do is when you make one swing you look at it and then you come from the other angle and you make the swing and then you meet in the middle i'm gonna have to find a better way how to ex explain that swing but it's not so hard i promise you practice doing it like this and you're gonna thank me later please do just look at your french and angle your brush right and just try to perfect it each time and then every time it's gonna get better and also this white polish is from DND. I've been using DND polishes for quite a minute, but what I notice is when it comes down to nail art, some of their polishes are really runny. So because of that, it doesn't hold the polish well on the brush to do an art. Like the polish doesn't stay in place. Like if I dip it in the polish, it runs like to the back of the brush so it doesn't stay in place it doesn't give me a good work so that's some of their polishes the white was perfect though so but anyways i still usually just buy their polishes because i tried all the other polishes but to be honest with you i just like dnd polishes i need to try others but I, I tried like three different brands and i just I just keep using D&Ds. I don't know why. Maybe because that's what I, I've been working with since I just started to do nails. So on the ring finger, guys, we're going to do like a brighter pink. And then on the thumb, we're going to do a light pink.
on this pinky finger and on the pointer finger we're gonna do a cow print look so whenever i'm doing cow print i usually use a dotting tool to do any type of dots or circles anything that have to do with that even the cloud nail guys i use a dotting tool to do the clouds as well so anything you see that looks like a splash or a cow look it's better to use like your dotting tool instead of using the liner brush to get the mark so i'm using my dotting tool and i'm going in with the lighter pink and then i also i'm going to come in and i'm going to outline these two nails in the end For the ring finger the middle finger and the thumb we're going to do a croc look whenever i'm doing a croc look i put my top coat on because we're going to throw clear polish on the croc and you don't want the 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 clear powder to stick on the polish so you have to put uh either matte top coat over the polish or you have to do shiny top coat. It depends on the look that you're going for. But before you do that acrylic throw on your croc print, you must have either matte or shiny top coat over the polish or else the, 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 the acrylic is just going to stick all over the polish and it's gonna be a mess. You just want the acrylic to stick on the, on the croc print or whatever print you're doing. So then you, after you let that dry, the clear polish dry, the, and then you're going to come in with your dotting tool again, and then you're going to draw your desired look, your croc look, and then you're going to throw the clear powder in the croc while the, while the polish is wet. So like I said before, you, you want to put the clear why why can't i differentiate 
clear top coat and clear powder. You're gonna put the clear top coat over it first. That way when you do your clear powder, it only sticks to the print. So after that, we're gonna come in and we're gonna do the design and then we're gonna throw the clear powder in the crock print. And also you wanna make sure that the, you let the clear top coat dries very well because if the clear top coat does not dry good, um, properly, you're going to see like the, the top coat, the powder is gonna stick to the top coat. So make sure that you cure that top coat properly because that powder will stick to anything that's sticky. And after this step guys, all I did was dust the nail off and on that pointer finger, I put um, diamonds on it, like a few rhinestones, and then I top coated the pointer finger. But I didn't have a chance to finish recording everything. But make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel because I have three banger videos this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was the final results. You did not have to go in and put no more top coat. All you did was dust the nail off and that's going to be the results. Bye.